Hey guys, so if you're new here or if you're not, if you want to hear me voice act, head over to our main channel, links down below. And if you don't, this channel's solely for TTS. Um, if you want to know all the details about what's going on, we have a stream up that you can go and watch, but let's just get into the video. Call of Cthulhu. Call of Cthulhu is a role-playing game based on the writings of H. P. Lovecraft, in which the player characters are more or less normal guys who might be able to fire a pistol without killing themselves. They try to find the truth of all existence. In the course of their investigations, the players might find themselves fighting horrors from beyond space, such as Cthulhu, who eats 1d3 investigators per round and is generally cranky after being woken from millennia of slumber. System. Call of Cthulhu uses the basic role playing system, BRP, first used in Runny Quest and also for Stormbringer, Elfquest, and a variety of other games. It uses an array of D&D style attributes, STR, DEX, INT, CON, POW, EDU, APP, SIS, rated on the familiar 3-18 scale, since 7 of those are on percent scale, plus around 60 skills rated as percentiles. Basics. To perform any action, roll the 100 and try to get under your skill. Rolling 1 stroke 5 of your skill is a critical success, or an impale on an attack. Used skills are marked and at the end of the adventure may increase by 1-3 points if you succeed in rolling under the inverse of the skill. This leads to very gradual and organic character progression, and encourages players to use as many of their skills as possible at least once per adventure. Attributes are checked in exactly the same way, though are typically multiplied to make the check passable, typically by 5. Another option is comparing them to an opposing score on a resistance table. For every point of difference the check is 5 points easier or harder, and 10 points difference is either an automatic success or failure. For example, someone with 10 STR trying to bust a door in with 12 STR has a 40% chance of doing so. Damage is handled via hit points, which for PCS never advance beyond the region of 10-20, though if they can justify it to the keeper they can get armor. Character generation. Charging is a relatively long process due to the number of skills and the percentile values, although the free program by Aki is available to speed things up. You roll attributes, select a profession, gain a bunch of skill points to spend on your professional skills, such as archaeology or painting then a bunch more to spend on your hobbies. For instance, firing Tommy guns, which definitely isn't a total waste of points. Gameplay. Investigators are typically unable to go toe to toe with the monsters in cock, so most of the game consists of investigation, exploration and gathering clues, with the investigators typically finding something they can do to either destroy or banish the thing that has been ravaging the area. Imagine Scooby-Doo, except with Eldritch, interdimensional horrors that will almost certainly kill you or drive you mad. So basically imagine the Scooby-Doo Mystery Incorporated finale, and who are impervious to most weapons humans can muster outside of a goddamn howitzer, or a passenger ship, or everyone with a boomerang. To deal with, though, shotguns should work for anything roughly man-shaped, rather than old man withers dressed up as a ghost to scare away the locals. If you are lucky your investigations will allow you to reach any sort of confrontation armed with magic, which, you guessed it, drives you insane to use, a list of the creature's weaknesses, or at least a metric fuckton of dynamite. Spot hidden and library use are two of the most commonly used skills and any player that thinks a gun is useful for anything other than intimidation will be having a fun time swimming inside a shogger for using it on themselves to stop the voices. One thing of note is the difference between Pulp and Purist play, each one supported by different ruler sets as of 7th edition. Purist is Call of Cthulhu as God intended, where investigative mystery comes first, witnesses and research are your main weapons and the real thrill comes from the intrigue and the sheer threat. Pulp is Call of Cthulhu as the Lovecraft light action adventure game, where the mythos can be pushed back with judicious use of firepower and dynamite and humanity can prevail against the encroaching dark. At least for a time. Pulp stories tend to be more internationalist as opposed to being in one geographic location primarily, and the timeline is brought forward a bit to the dirty 30s. The Great Depression is in full swing, 
liberal democracy is under threat from a sweeping tide of authoritarianism. Most Americans are dirt poor and or unemployed. Quick and cheap intercontinental air travel is now a thing, and movies no longer suck. Characters in pulp games have more HP and become quite a bit more likely to survive, but it arguably loses some of the horror and imminent danger that comes from purist play. There are merits to both styles so give them both a try. Sanity. Sanity or San represents your mental stability. It is capped at the inverse of your Cthulhu Mythos skill, that is to say, you cannot know what is really going on and remain sane. When you experience something terrifying you make a San check, if you fail you lose a random amount of San, and often a small amount if you succeed as well. If you lose a substantial amount, 5 or more in one go, you can have a panic attack, flee or any other sort of madness, though you have to roll to repress the memory of the thing you see first. If you lose a very large amount, one fifth in a game hour, you can develop phobias, mental conditions, or go insane for months on end. If you run out entirely you become an NPC, who may go insane and gibber in a corner for the rest of his life, or he may go and join the bad guys. It's not all bad though, as going insane from something mythos related actually gives you insights into the thing you have seen. Sanity loss is a source of both frustration and good role playing opportunities, as on the one hand playing out multiple personality disorder can be good fun. On the other hand being trapped in a hole with a monster is bad when one character has a darkness phobia and is curled up in the fetal position, one is claustrophobic and has fainted and one with a snake phobia who refuses to use a rope to climb out can be either frustrating or fun for player and keeper alike. Rural is a great app available on the Apple and Google Play Store as well as desktop for creating beautiful 8-bit character art. The app has 14 supported races, 150 plus weapons, 400 plus armor pieces for you to mix and match, 20 plus mini bases. There is that much to work from I was able to make Cold Steel the Hedgehog, the God Emperor of Mankind, Pepe and they are always adding more artwork. The app also has a character sheet to help keep track of everything during games. And if that wasn't enough you can play about with the app for free with limited artwork. So go ahead check it out and if you decide to buy the app use promo code NICKBEDIA for 10% off and it lets them know we sent you. It's a great sponsor and a great app and we hope you guys go ahead and check it. But let's get back to the video. Setting. Cock is set in the world of Lovecraft's Cthulhu Mythos but incorporates many of the inventions of later writers and the revisions of August Derleth. The historical setting is the 1920s, the era when Lovecraft wrote most of his work. However you have a plethora of other historical settings to choose from, so you can be jumping through time more than your average season of Doctor Who. Modern Day Adventures, specifically the 1990s, Though nowadays even that decade is starting to veer into period peace territory, oof, are also possible and have had a healthy amount of official support over the years, traditionally sold as a side setting called Cthulhu now, but as of 7th edition the modern setting is folded into the core rulebook so you can run modern adventures right away. However, while the modern day has the obvious advantage of being more relatable to the players, the jazz classic era has several other advantages. The lack of readily available communications, no cell phones or internet for you. Comma makes it easier to isolate the investigators from outside help. The fact that parts of the world like the Amazon and the Himalayas were still unexplored. World War I was only a few years ago, which means any adult male in their 20s or 30s will plausibly have military experience and be confident in a scrap. All in all, the 1920s was just more mysterious, it is harder to run games in modern eras because players will have all kinds of nifty technology to derail the adventure or circumvent the threat. It should be noted of course that you shouldn't allow yourself to get worked up over historical accuracy, and feel free to take all kinds of liberties with events. Treated like magic it's Lovecraftian horror, I don't need to explain it. Some of the other more well-known historical settings are, Acton Cthulhu, it's World War II, but with the mythos. Currently in limbo as the company making it, Modifius, released a 7th edition PDF and were talking about their own rules version of the game but have gone quiet. 
Think commandos and os operations against Nazis who are probably being their usual twat selves and playing around with mythos bullshit to give them an edge over the allies. Has the advantage of having two major antagonists to blow away in a hail of bullets and tank fire. Definitely better used with pulp rules, as otherwise your PCS will probably be killed in a hail of gunfire before you can say oh shit, I forgot Nazis tend to have MP40s. Double quote. As an alternative there is also World War Cthulhu by British developer Cubicle 7, which focuses on World War II and covers a bit of the first decade of the The Cold War II. Contrary to Acton, WWC takes a less pulpy and more purist tone. No secret organization fighting evil Nazi sorcerer organizations, just some desperate quasi-rogue ally agents fighting creatures from the mythos while the war is raging on without any official backing or authorization. Cthulhu Dark Ages, and just as you were starting to get used to Rome, it collapsed. The Empire fell and Europe is now a patchwork quilt of squabbling barbarian kingdoms. But the mythos is still out there, and it represents as grave a threat as it always did. The world is built on the ruins of ancient civilizations, not just Rome but Stygia, Hyperborea and Atlantis as well. Here, the horror comes not from the mythos threatening humanities, at this time lacking, understanding of the world, but its religious bedrock, you should strive to shake the faith of your PCS to their core and make them doubt their god even exists. And the medieval weapons and armor technology makes combat encounters especially lethal. Just recently received the 7th edition treatment from Chaosium. Included in the book is details of an Anglo-Saxon community and a best eerie to throw at it. Cthulhu by Gaslight, Lovecraftian horror set in the gay 90s. The 1890s that is. This is Cthulhu Adventures in Victorian Britain. Specifically, the zenith of the British Empire, the time of Sherlock Holmes, Jack the Ripper and Penny Dreadful. It's very similar to the jazz classic 1920s but with some key cultural differences, namely England's vast history. Remember the saying, in America a hundred years is a long time, in England a hundred miles is a long way isolation is going to be more of a problem. But you can take advantage of conspiracies and events going back to medieval or even pagan times, gross social inequality and class warfare, widespread interest in occult matters, less access to technology, no cars, telephones or repeating firearms here. Comma and lots and lots of fog. Enjoy. Cthulhu Invictus, set in the Antonine period, 96 ad 180 ad, of the Roman Empire. The Empire is, relatively, stable and the citizens are, mostly, content. Sounds great right? Except there's a shadow war going on where agents are running around the Empire fighting the mythos wherever it rears its ugly head. Inhuman races and fantastic and terrible creatures still have a strong presence in the world in times before modernity forced them underground, and all kinds of unspeakable cults lurk in everyday society. Roman society was extremely different from today, you live under a vast multinational military dictatorship built on centuries of slaughter and slavery, that controlled their citizens in ways that would make modern fascists blush. People tend to do things more for honor or personal glory than because it's right, and nobody will think you are crazy if you tell them you saw a satyr or that someone cast a spell on you, in fact some careers actually start with a spell or two. This is a setting that fits pulp or purist rules equally well, recently got a 7th edition book, and definitely one you should at least give a try. Delta Green, set in modern times, covering from more or less from the Vietnam War through the day you're reading this, with possibility for games set in the 1920s and World War II. The investigators are part of the eponymous Delta Green organization, a ultra-secret black ops organization inside the U. S. government, created in 1928 after the raid in Innsmouth. However, Delta Green has not only to contain the incursions from the Cthulhu mythos, but also fight other secret conspiracies and rogue organizations that use the forbidden powers of the great old ones. This gives Delta Green a conspiracy and spy thriller tone, but still managing, if not ramping up, the unrelenting horror and bleakness of Call of Cthulhu. Down darker trails. Strap on your six shooters and saddle up, cowboy, because you're taking on the mythos in the days of the old American Wild West. Expansive book with lots of historical details and options to play entire campaigns in. 
comes with both regular and pulp rules to fit all tastes, and the increased focus on gunplay will probably see you going the pulp route, and has at least one campaign book as of writing. Definitely worth a look. Mythic Iceland, it's the Kthulhu Mythos vs the Vikings. Nuff said. At a whopping 276 pages, it's less a campaign setting and more a mammoth almanac containing character creation rules, a special bestiary for Icelandic creatures, a full adventure, almost anything you would need to know about Iceland a life, their religion, lifestyle, unique legal system and government, etc. Comma a new runic magic system, information about other lands, and even a supplement for dark ages and an adventure for that too. Brilliant. Brilliant book. Grab it. Pulp Kthulhu. This variation moves the setting forward to the pre-war 1930s, to accommodate air travel and globe-trotting adventures, and changes the tone of the game to two-fisted pulp flicks, like Hugo Jernsback's Amazing Stories. PCS and Pulp Kthulhu will be somewhat more capable in a scrap than usual and have access to gunplay, psychic powers, combat feats and weird science. Perfect for punching out Nazis and dinosaurs and whatever else you end up against. There is even a mechanic for spending luck points to bring a dead character back to life, suitably with a ridiculous story of how they really survive the circumstances of their death. Keep in mind though that pulp characters can still lose San and go batchet like usual, and those extra HP can only take you so far. Reign of Terror, Mon Dieu, it is their French Revolution. The birthplace of modern democracy, a time of mass bloodshed, intrigue and social upheaval. In other words, the perfect setting for battles with the mythos. More a pair of scenarios expanding on the campaign horror on the Orient Express than a complete setting but it gives enough flavor and options for further expanding it into its own thing, plus plot hooks for keepers to expand on. No tabletop RPG is complete without beautiful models on the table and the best place to get models is from us. If you check the link below we have everything you could need for your magical realm. Only the finest of big titty wafers here. But if you're not into models or don't play with models we got you covered with subclasses such as the Gachimashi Wizards, the Simp Warlock and the North FC Fighter. Also we have started selling 5th edition adventures with our first one featuring Belle Delphine, the succubus that has poisoned the town's well and turned the villagers into simps. If any of that stuff sounds fun to you go ahead and check the link below but let's get back to the video. There are also these much less used settings. Convix and Kthulhu. G-Day, mate. You lot are heading to Australia. As in Australia, the 1800s penal colony. It's literally on the other side of the world from the civilized world, claustrophobic and remote, so it is a great setting for horror. Aboriginals, criminals and gullers who are not so different from the crims come together in the embrace of madness. Dreamlands, beyond the veil of sleep lies an ethereal and haunting alternate dimension which resembles a more fantastical version of Earth's past, where the gods themselves play and all kinds of bizarre alien races and civilizations live. Maybe you came here by descending down the 70 steps of light slumber, maybe you saw the white ship and decided to hop on and see where it takes you, or maybe you entered through one of the many gateways in the waking world, like the one in Germany's Black Forest, the California Redwoods, or Roanoke Island. Whatever the case, welcome to the Dreamlands, Lovecraft's foray into Alice in Wonderland style fantasy, and it can be your foray too. It is a world of incredible wonder and danger in equal measure, and death in the dreamlands induces dream death, causing you to go insane or die in your sleep. What fun! Kthulhu End Times. End Times is a post-apocalyptic horror setting in the 22nd century. The stars finally came right, the great old ones returned and the world screamed when they did. Most of humanity died immediately in the madness of the atomic fire, they were the lucky ones and the few left are mostly enslaved by the alien gods or wandering deranged, but a few live in isolated primitive states and fewer still exist as small warbands taking the fight to the cults wherever and whenever they can. The only free and sane humans left are on two tiny colonies on Mars, numbering about 1000, and with no contact with Earth, as anybody who just looks at it through a telescope loses their minds. One thing of note is the end times, the reaping setting and through the ages, described below, is deliberately vague on the law, 
allowing post-apocalyptic adventures can be set in the modern day, the future or even the past, say the investigators of 1927 failed to stop Alia from rising from the ocean floor and the world failed its collective sand roll when a psionic alien god reached out and crushed the minds of every person in the western hemisphere. You can even go against the intended use and run zombie apocalypse games in end times completely independent of the mythos. The lethal combat lends itself very well there. Cthulhu Punk. For GURPS, it's Call of Cthulhu but Cyberpunk. Cthulhu Tech. For when regular Lovecraftian horror no longer cuts the mustard. This is a heady cocktail of Lovecraftian horror, cyberpunk sci-fi and space opera, with a dash of Shadoran, Neon Genesis Evangelion and Macros for flavor. Set in 2085 ad, this setting adds rules for cybernetics. Virtual reality, psionics, superhuman abilities, directed energy weapons, and metherficking robots. But even with all their cool toys, humanity is fighting a losing war against the mythos and everyone on some level knows they're doomed. So most people live in denial, use drugs to escape or hold their weapons fast and fight to the bitter end. It's awesome. Cthulhu's Veria, very new setting book, fresh from Kickstarter centered on adventures in Sweden in the 1920s. Currently only available in Swedish and no current plans for an English translation, but might still be of interest for collector's value. I would highly recommend you pick up the Cthulhu Through the Ages book which acts as a delicious smorgasbord for many of these settings. Weighing in at a lightweight 81 pages, it contains Baybones rules for Invictus, Dark Ages, Mythic Iceland, Gaslight, Dreamlands, End Times and Icarus, claustrophobic survival horror set on a spaceship, think Alien or Event Horizon, as well as investigator occupations and organizations, idea seeds for adventures, and period equipment lists, plasma weapons for the futuristic settings and medieval weapons and armor for the pre-gunpowder settings. And the post-apocalyptic one too, for that matter. The premise of Lovecraft's world is that we live in a small circle of farlight and sanity created by human civilization, and beyond that circle the universe is dark, and caring, and full of things with tentacles and too many eyes. There is no god, all our religion and spirituality is just a fake comfort blanket, and our science doesn't properly describe the universe either. We are unimportant but also unfortunately we are not alone. There are many aliens that inhabit our reality in the parallel dimensions we cannot, usually, perceive, and when we do perceive them, it usually ends badly. These aliens aren't like Star Trek or Warhammer 40,000 baddies where we can reason with them or simply remove them with force if we can't. They are more like demons or gods, ancient beyond reckoning and able to manipulate time, matter and space with ease. We also cannot comprehend their intelligence or their technology, and communication between us and them is only on a crude level, often using their psychic powers to influence our dreams. The prevailing theory is that our species was created 300,000 years ago by an elder race who ruled Earth in the time of the dinosaurs, then they either left to go fight a war with one of their other creations gone rogue. Or they just created us as amusing fools and then forgot all about us when the novelty of the joke wore off. Problem is, they probably haven't forgot us, and they want their planet back. Even their lowly servants are often beyond our ability to defeat, and the best we can manage is temporary victories that push the doomsday clock back a decade or two and allow us to carry on just a little longer. But we will fail, eventually. In terms of physical location, the, fortunately, Fictional city of Arkham, Massachusetts is a common setting. Arkham is an amalgamation of several New England towns and contains all the massive libraries, decaying colonial houses, faux gothic estates and inbred lunatics that one could want for an American horror setting. There is also Arkham's Miskatonic University, an organization with a worse safety record than the fucking Umbrella Corporation. If your character is a professor, he likely teaches at Miskatonic and will therefore surely die. Cock on TG. Call of Cthulhu is consistently popular among gamers. Rail for sand loss has inevitably become a meme, used in place of ire, my eyes or sometimes man the harpoons. Well guys hope you enjoy today's video. We are going to assume you have if you have stayed to the end. 
consider subscribing and clicking the notification bell if you really enjoyed it to stay up to speed with any and all new videos. Also check out the links below to our shop for some fat ass titties and our sponsor Rural and be sure to use a promo code at checkout so they know we sent you and you'll get 10% off. And until next time.